I am Jackie Waringa, Warwick's daughter. For those of you who attended, I hope you enjoyed yourself. For those of you who are unable to attend, I hope this little video allows you to be part of Dad's send-off. Lake Macquarie is a special place for Richardson's and a great place to hold its tribute. I remember weeks of holiday fun with Dad, uncles and cousins, so it seemed a fitting place for me to sneak out onto our grandparents' jetty that we no longer own and sprinkle a few of his ashes into the water on the day that would have been his 75th birthday. Thank you to all his friends and family who travelled long distances and contributed in some way towards the day. It was pretty hard to get a photo of Dad, particularly where he was facing the camera, so I am very grateful to all of you who sent me photos and video footage. Thank you for coming today to give us all a chance to sit around and tell lots of stories and probably lots of lies, I suspect, about the man that Warwick Richardson was. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Penny and Warwick and I were partners for a few years and I'm very proud to say good mates for the next 25 years. It wasn't easy for Warwick to have a woman, particularly one who was an ex-partner for a friend, because apparently women have too many holes under their toes. Uh, but I insisted on staying friends with him. I still have had a lifetime of knowledge I wanted to learn from him. And let's face it, he was the gatekeeper for the best barrow fishing around, so it's important that we all have an opportunity to do that. I'm not going to say too much about him because he hated eulogies and said that people should say the things they wanted to say about a person to the person when they were alive. I think I'm right though, because I suspect I said everything I'm going to say today to him, and a lot more probably while he was still here. Those of you that know him, know the man he was, and in particular the horseman he was. There wasn't any of our horses that didn't do tricks and carry flags or bow or take the hat off your head. And it was beautiful to watch him ride, even though I only got to watch him ride later on in his life. Even after we split, if anything was wrong with any of our horses, I would bring him straight away and generally get the solution that was right on. He had the most wonderful remedies and recipes to treat almost anything to do with horses. And I remember often being frustrated that he was very casual about having that knowledge and not sharing it. Don't despair though, I followed him around with a notebook. Um, so we still have all the notes on, and the remedies for Queensland itch, sarcoids, rubs and galls, colics, wounds, distemper, parvo and dogs, as well as how to make the best saddle for each you could ever want to make and tan any type of skin that you would ever want to tan, and even some skins you wouldn't want to tan. <laughs> but they, they're all still there. Jackie and I will put together some information to forward it to anyone that wants to have it. He was a funny bugger, along with being one of the cleverest and most capable men I've ever met. The two younger brothers, Tommy, Murray was his name, but they called him Tommy, and Blo, were quite critical of Warwick's auto-electrical skills, so I'm pleased to tell you about the old car that he rewired when he was much younger. Apparently when you turn the blinker on, the windscreen wipes yeah. went, and <laughs> vice versa. <laughs> I, just, I suspect it might have been quite a while before that actually got fixed. Two places for me here too today, which is wonderful. There are friends from his early days at Dubbo, and from Ryan Home to Wimber and Golf. There are friends who give stories from his rodeo days, from his Saturday days, from droving times, and his Wallabang and Escot times, and I can't wait to talk to you all. Before I go, I'm going to tell you a story about this saddle here, which is the first saddle I ever made. He taught me we'd been seeing each other for three months when um, we got together in August, and my birthday was in October, so he bought me a, a tree from John Davis at Tamworth, and we went to Wingham tannery to choose the hide. It was beautiful ox blood hide at the time that I bought it. It's got a fair bit of special grease on it now, so it doesn't look ox blood anymore. Um, and taught me to sew. So we were at the house at Cold Point, uh, Mother's old house, which they, the family had kept right up until... Jack, what year did Mother die? 96. So the family had kept it from when Rookie's grandfather bought it in 55 until 1996. And um, he was teaching me how to make a saddle. So, three months, pretty new. Hadn't really been know the fella that well. And um, I'd finish the panel and show him and he'd look at it and his pocket knife would come out of his pocket and he'd go, you'll have to redo that. <laughs> we survived that and I got a beautiful saddle that my mum no longer fits in. 
Um, but the other subtle at that is one that he um, made for me when he was on Wallabram Station, and he's got a story too. If you pick it up and have a look underneath, you'll see there's the, um, the brown seat underneath. It looks like it's the side of the washing. That's it up there. Turn it up the other way so we can see underneath, Mark. Yeah. See that underneath there? It looks like the side of the washing machine. That's because that's what it is. Um, <laughs> we didn't have anything for the ground seat and saddle, so we went to the Wallabang dump and found an old washing machine up there and we um, cut it out and put that in. It's the best saddle around. All right, have a wonderful time and hopefully we can get a chance to talk lots. Thank you. I must thank Kenny for the amazing job she did in seeing, greeting guests, organising playlists, entertaining and generally keeping things running smoothly. Kenny and her son Dan did so much for Dad. Dan was truly like a son to him. I will always appreciate their generosity. Speaking of generosity, Clint, Emily and the Gollum family would have loved to be there. They took Dad into their home, looked after him and cared for him. He adored their children, and I will always be so grateful to them for making Dad's last days such happy ones. I'm also grateful to Sandra, Alice and Jagamo of the Burktown Hospital for keeping us all up to date for the past couple of years. They were always looking out for him, going above and beyond. They even built him a fence for his dogs. I am so grateful to Gary Butler, his mate who always looked after him in Burktown. He travelled all the way to his memorial to collect the majority of his ashes and bring him home again. Dad always had itchy feet until he settled at Escott. It was also great that Kenny Booth, Will and Barb Hitchner and Clinton Murray travelled all the way from North Queensland. I was so pleased that Uncle Blow's daughter Ayla and her whole family travelled here from Capella near Emerald. Having my cousin Grant and Annie there as well made it feel like a Richardson reunion at the lake. Thank you to Barry Litchfield for the framed photo and gifting us the fantastic whip my dad made nearly 50 years ago. Dad taught my cousin Grant how to crack a whip, so it was a very special highlight at the end of the memorial when he demonstrated this. This led to an impromptu whip cracking competition. Dad would have absolutely loved the fact that we were disturbing the peace at the Belmont Sailing Club. Grant then taught my son Luke, probably not the best whip for him to learn with. I always thought Dad was fairly isolated in Burktown, but his phone showed me how many of you he kept in regular contact with. Gabe Kennedy, the wife of the previous manager of Escott, took this wonderful photo of Dad. He was excited to send the original to me, complete with its blue ribbon from the Clong Curry Show. 
I often used to talk to Dad at six in the morning and that's when I miss him the most. I'd ask him if it was too early and he'd say he'd been up for hours and I must have slept in. You are all an important connection to my father and I hope you keep in touch. And now, as Dad always said, Roger.